All right, welcome to Rattling Bones. Here's an introduction to the free rigs available on this DVD. This tutorial will show you each one and also how to interact with it. There are eight great free rigs in all that are all completely free to use for whatever you would like. First, there's the biped rig. He was created by Nathan Vegdahl with the goal of making the simplest yet complete biped rig. It has no face, but most of this DVD is focused on body motion anyway, so it's a great starting point. Then there's the cover star of the DVD. I've called him Jim. I created Jim because I really like the idea of a super simple rig, but I also like having an expressive face to play with, so I guess I wanted to fill a void. Next is Man Candy, a great free rig by Basam Kodali. It's a little more complicated and it has a lot more controls on it, but it's also very effective. Then there's JC the Rabbit. JC actually stands for John Candy and he's from Big Buck Bunny. He's also rigged by Nathan Vegdahl. The rigs on Big Buck Bunny are actually quite simple and easy to use. So if you like the idea of animating with a big fat bunny, go for it. I know I had a lot of fun doing the animations for these characters. And actually, the rest of the characters from Big Buck Bunny are also included on the DVD. So there's the flying squirrel, and there's the red squirrel, there's also the chinchilla, and the bird. And remember, all of these rigs are included on the DVD. And also, they're open source, which means you can use the rigs for whatever you want. You don't even need to ask for a license. You can even use them in commercial projects. You do need to credit the creators though. Now, let's dive into it. First, we'll start with the biped rig. I've opened Blender and loaded the biped rig. As you can see, it has some very simple controls on it. Here's the pelvis, there's also a bone in the middle and a, a torso on top. The bones for all of these characters are divided into a few different bone layers up here. The first one includes the basic controls. And the second one includes the IK controls for inverse kinematics. And the last one has some sliders where you can go from IK to FK. The last ones are not meant to be changed by the animator. So before you start, I recommend that you set both his legs to IK by moving these sliders right over to the right side. You can leave the arms as FK. And now you'll see when I move the torso around, you'll see the feet stay put. And if you go to the second layer and enable the IK controls, I can then uh, change the direction of the knees by using these controls here. And I can very, very easily make a kind of a crazy uh, dance with him here by just moving the torso bone because the feet are stuck to the ground. And you can of course move the feet by moving the IK goals here at the end of the feet. And again, uh, change the position of the knees. I'm going to just uh, make a pose with him here. And since we just had the Olympics, I'm going to make kind of, kind of a, a running uh, athlete uh, sort of pose. So I'll put him a little bit uh, further into the air, put his feet back as well. And as you can see, it's, uh, he's very, very simple to move around. Now the advantage of having him completely segmented like this rig is that you never get any deformation problems. You never get any problem with this sort of skin looking weird or sliding around because it's just made out of rigid parts. So I'm just moving them around. And even though the hands are FK, I have auto IK enabled, which means I can sort of move the hands around as though they were IK. And this makes it much quicker like this to pose the uh, the arms. So 
So now we already have a kind of cool uh, running pose here. And uh, I, sometimes I like to just uh, disable the bones so that I can see the character without the distracting bones, just to see what we have. I'm just getting him look up a little bit more. And let's give him like a real kind of a cool leap. All right, that should give you a good idea of how to manipulate this rig. Next, let's look at the gym character that I did for this DVD. It's actually based on the same biped rig that we already saw. So it has the same bones and the same layers. So on layer 2 you have the same IK controls as before. Now of course the main difference between this one and the last one is that this one has a face. So if you go to the third layer and fourth layer, there are some facial controls. So there's the jaw and the upper lip, the lower lip and um, eyes, uh, pupils and uh, some controls in the forehead to just sort of uh, move those face muscles around, get him a little bit angry. And you know, we'll, we'll make uh, something different. So we'll, we'll make a sort of a slightly aggressive pose for this one, just to play around with him. We'll just move the upper lip up a little bit and, uh, and use this control to move the forehead up and make him look kind of really angry and mad. And as you can see, using these very few controls in the face, we can uh, actually get him to portray kind of a wide range of emotions. And of course, this is just a face. You can show a lot of emotions in the body, so I'll uh, just move the head down a little bit. Now let's give him a little bit more of an interesting posture. I'll turn back on the second layer and play around with the IK controls a little bit, put his feet back on the ground and I'll just give him an, uh, a little bit of a contrapose. So I'll put the foot up a little, little bit and um, just put him slightly down into his knees and just make sure that the torso and the pelvis oppose each other. They have the opposite rotation that gives him kind of a, a contrapose. And uh, he'll have his hand on his hip. And so it's very easy to pose. And actually, I think I'll just, I think I'll, I might just, just uh, sort of keep the hand there the other hand, so that he's kind of uh, almost, he's like angrily pointing towards something, as though he's saying like, go there or something. Now with the jaw, you can actually not only rotate, you can also grab it, so you can Using that, you can also sort of mangle the face a little bit if it doesn't look quite how you want it. I'll just get him to point a little bit more downward. All right, that should give you a pretty good idea of how to use this rig and just change his facial expressions easily. And now we'll go over to Man Candy. Now, Man Candy has become almost sort of an icon in the Blender animation community. And he's actually a little bit more of an advanced rig. He has a lot of uh, controls in him, but uh, he's also very effective. For example, you can curve the shape of the legs and you can do all sorts of crazy things with the face. And there are lots of very cool fine-tuning controls that are really fun to mess around with. First of all, I'm just giving him a basic pose using the main controls. 
So I'm using the legs and IK and moving the arms around until I have them roughly where I want them. And I'm going to give him a little bit of a silly sort of a line dancer pose. So imagine he's standing on a very thin rope and perhaps he's about to fall down. So he's a little bit off balance. And here you can see some of the some of the cool uh, controls that let you curve the legs to give them sort of an, a, a cartoony um, curve to them instead of them being, um, you know, completely straight as a regular leg would be. I'm going to take this pose a little bit more to the extreme. So I'll just curve the arms. I want to give him that sort of really old school rubber hose look that you saw in uh, early cartoons. Now we'll move into the face. As you can see, there are lots of controls for the mouth. I'll just open the jaw with this control down here. And you can sort of overall give the mouth an overall shape with this uh, object and then you can sort of tweak it afterwards. I'll just bring his eyebrows up a little bit with these controls. And you, with this one you can change the direction of the eye. And with these ones you can sort of give the face an overall stretch. Often you do this in kind of an action sequence in the middle of a fast move just to give him some cartoony snappiness but I'll just move them down here just for fun change the shape of his face a little bit and I'm just gonna make him look down as though he's looking down into a deep canyon next thing I'll just uh, sort out the hands and uh, I'm gonna spread the fingers a little bit because he's really scared The last thing I want to do is just fine tune the face a little bit. I want to make his eyes uh, just look as though they're really scared. There's a long way down. I'm just going to make them pop a little bit. So you can use these controls to just sort of uh, distort the eyes a little bit. So if you want to temporarily uh, make them pop out. All right, that should give you a good idea of how to manipulate man candy. Next is John Candy the rabbit and here he is in Blender and you'll be surprised by how simple the rabbit character is actually compared to man candy. There are only quite few controls and uh, the challenge with him though is uh, the fat. It can be hard to make the fat look exactly right but there are kind of fat controls that you can adjust to get the fat to fall just how you would like it. So I'm going to give him just kind of a a lazy morning pose here. He's just woken up probably and he's just gotten out of uh, his little rabbit hole. So here you can see the uh, the fat controls and here we have the face. These sort of glasses change the direction of the eyes. I'm just going to bring the eyebrows down a little bit on the sides and then bring them both up just to give him that really sort of lazy look. And uh, of course he doesn't have enough energy to smile. He's just gotten out of bed so he's really, he's just really tired. And on the, the next layer from the face you can fine tune facial details. I'm going to just fine tune the shape of the mouth here to give it a more round appearance. There's also controls for the ears, so I'll get them to hang a little bit because he's he's really tired. Also, I think I put them back a little bit just to uh, exaggerate that a little bit more and make it asymmetrical. All right, that's it for the rabbit. As you can see, it's very easy to use. Next is Frank the Flying Squirrel. Now all of the characters on Big Buck Bunny have the bones organized in the same layers. So once you've gotten used to one of the rigs, you'll get used to the others as well. I'm just moving this character down. The cool thing about uh, the Flying Squirrel rig is that it can act both as a quadruped rig and also a regular biped. 
so that he can switch from walking on two feet to running on all fours. Now I'm just going to give this character sort of a very cute look. The other cool thing about him is that he's very ambiguous. In the beginning of the movie Big Buck Bunny, he's very um, cute, and in the end, he's more aggressive. So this rig lets you give him a very wide range of emotions, and that makes it very flexible. So I'm just putting the hands down here, giving that a cute sort of posture. I'll just make it a little bit more asymmetric too. So I'll just... Uh, rotate the hips out a little bit and do the opposite with the top. Then I'm going to switch over to the layer with the face. And I'm just going to change the eyebrows a little bit, put them a little bit more up. And if you scale these glasses, you'll see that the pupils inside his eyes also grow. That also helps to make him look more cute. I'm just going to make him look up as though he's uh, small and increase the size of his eyes. Big eyes are also cute. So and I'll just bring the mouth a little bit more together. And uh, lastly, I'll also just take down the ears a little bit. That should give him a very sort of cute look. And the next thing I want to show you is the tail. The tail rig for this character is very, very cool. Using these bones, you can just scale and move them, rotate them around. And there are only three controls, but the tail is always completely smooth. And it also makes it very easy to animate because the tail sort of just moves swiftly between the different control points. And that should give you a good idea how to pose this character. Next is the red squirrel character. And I've just opened him up into Blender here. And uh, in the movie he's very goofy, so I'll give him a very goofy pose. And again, you'll see that the controls on the different characters on Big Buck Bunny are almost identical. So once you've gotten used to one of the rigs, it's very easy to get used to the other ones as well. So I'm just uh, moving his arm up a little bit and uh, enabling the layer with the face controls. And they look just like the, the other Big Buck Bunny rigs as well, you can see. So I'll just make the eyes uh, nice and big. I don't don't pull the uh, eyebrows up too much. You can see that they uh, they sort of pop a little bit if you just bring them up too much. So watch out with that. And then I'll just uh, add the next layer, which includes the uh, fine tuning bones that let you change the shape of the nose. So I'll just rotate the nose up a little bit and give him a sort of a silly grin kind of a look. And I mean, you can even scale things like this. I'm scaling the mouth. And next I'm just bringing the arm up to touch his teeth. And as you can see, we have a very silly pose. As you can see, it's a little bit more limited in terms of what the face can do. It's still very cool. All right. The next one is the little chinchilla and he's actually maybe my favorite character to work with among the big bug bunny rigs because it's so simple basically you have two bones to manipulate him with there is the head and then there is the body bone underneath it and using those two bones you can you can give him any posture you like there's no bones for like uh, ribs in the middle or anything like that of course, it also has arms and feet, but it even doesn't have any legs. So it's just this little fur ball, and I think it's really fun to play with. Because using very few controls, you can give him any sort of uh, look you want. I'm just uh, putting down the ears a little bit. I'm going to give him sort of a little bit of a shy, cheeky look. So he's looking towards the camera, he's a little bit shy. Maybe he's turned his head a little bit away also. So I'm going to bring up the eyebrows a little bit and uh, make him look towards the camera and he's going to have sort of a very sort of a, a shy smile to him.
I'll just make him look down a little bit more as though he's sort of a little bit embarrassed as well. All right, that's it for the chinchilla. He's one of the most fun characters, I think. And that's it. You should have now a pretty good idea of how to use and manipulate the rigs on the DVD.